What is the best low income job you ever had? Cook at a breakfast restaurant. No double shifts. The owner was really nice and would bust dishes when we were super busy. Most of the cooks and some servers were friends, so we regularly hung out. To top it off we had windows slash a lot of natural light. The atmosphere really made all the difference. Then the owner sold the place and the new owner was fully incompetent, and we all left. Really cool they gave you drinks with the windows. The restaurant didn't have a liquor license. They closed a few hours after lunch, so other than paying servers a couple dollars less per hour there was no real benefit. We did occasionally allow liquor in our coffees, though. During specific holidays. Shift manager at Hollywood Video, making $7.25 slash HR. For some reason, we were the only story in the area where corporate allowed us to order whatever movies we wanted for the store. A lot of the employees were film students at the local university, so we ordered a lot of crazy crap. We had a great indie, foreign and um collection. We had the entire Twin Peaks series on VHS. Because Hollywood Video didn't make you pay your late fees to rent new movies, our clientele were mostly customers who couldn't rent from Blockbuster B slash C of high late fees. We hated the Blockbuster people, and would crank call them all the time. We'd dial them up, and ask crap like, do you have private parts? Can I touch them? Or do you have Lorenzo's oil? Can I rub it all over my body? Our store manager was the coolest. Guy who would let us play whatever movies we wanted, as long as they weren't rated R, in the store. We were such a motley crew, it felt like working at Empire Records. I miss that job and those people so much. Hey, it's me the guy who used to work at Blockbuster. Those prank phone calls were so funny, but also frick you. P.S. Why did Blockbuster need a PA system for an employee to talk over? Top 10 Anim Reunion Ox. Selling comfort shoes. Nothing like seeing a customer walk in practically in tears because their feet hurt so much and leave with a huge smile on their face because their feet have stopped hurting. What kind of shoes? I've sold different brands at different places, but I highly recommend Finn Comfort, Dansko, Echo, Abia, Bio Line, Nayot, Mephisto, Dunham, Erevan, Comfs, Etrex, New Balance, and Taos. There's no one shoe that's perfect for everyone, but between those brands, one of them will have a shoe that's perfect for most any particular person. For one of my crying customers, I sold her an Etrex sandal and a Dansko lace up casual shoe. She had plantar fasciitis and fibromyalgia and didn't think she could wear a sandal. Had a customer with a surgically repaired club foot ecstatic about her Danko clogs. Another near tears customer had plantar fasciitis and I fixed her up with a relatively normal athletic shoe with an Etrex orthotic to perk her up. The most important thing is fit. Far too many people wear shoes that aren't wide enough, that being the easiest misfit to notice. Next, you need arch support that matches your foot. Only after that do materials become important, and there, you want to look for real leather and cork. Polyurethane soles are nice, but be careful with them. They are subject to a condition called hydrolysis, where the chemical bonds in the plastic break down. I worked in a record store off and on again for nearly 8 years, when I was young. Met the woman that became my wife and two of my longest slash closest friends while there. The store is closed and it was torn down to build a Chick-fil-A a few years ago. I'll always cherish the years I spent there. What would be in your bag? If I may ask. Who op? Good question. I'm going to answer this as what I'd wanna buy if I went into a store today. Russian Circle's blood year completely forgot this was released last year. Being lazy about picking it up. Metal slash post. Rock. Just riffs and riffs and top notch drumming. Hum down wood as heaven would haven't bought the remaster on vinyl yet, but it is on my radar. One of the best alternative rock bands from the 90s. They should have been bigger. Minuteman double nickels on the dime freak me. I have no idea what I did with my copy. I need to replace it it is punk rock with a slight country tinge. A must own for anyone into indie, punk, or alternative rock. Sir George the Life Aquatic. Studio session stripped down Bowie covers by a man playing a guitar and singing in Portuguese. This is the full sessions of the music he did for the soundtrack to the Life Aquatic. Larilyn Resistor Americana slash singer-songwriter mostly known for her role in season 2 of True Detective. But, her music is just so damn well crafted. 
I only have a couple of her albums, this is the next one I plan to buy. Relocally the initial friend app been a fan of this for ages, never got around to buying this before it disappeared. They just reissued it a couple weeks back. Up until the pandemic, I had been working as a cameraman. Loved it despite the pay. I was on stage with great bands, behind the net in the AHL, in the pits at motocross, and so much more. I've used this time to earn its certs, but I may try and keep my side gig if I land a real job. My area is lucky enough to have cases down where I can do photography again. Nothing quite like it, and it feels really good when you take a great picture. Photography sucks for those 49 over 50 shots that look terrible, but the 1 over 50 good one makes up for it. Worked for a firework stand one summer. Pretty much explains itself. Oh and at the beginning of the season they had an orientation, which was just them naming and showing each firework, and then lighting it off. You're gonna stand there, out in a fireworks stand, and tell me you don't have no whistling bungholes, no spleen splitters, whisker biscuits, hunky lighters, whoska deuce, whoska don'ts, cherry bombs, nipsy dazers, with or without the scooter stick, or one single whistling kitty chaser? It ain't about what you like, it's about the consumer. Capturing libbies in little plastic bottles, gently chilling them until they were docile, and gluing tiny colored plastic tags with numbers onto their backs. Then sitting outside in a flower bed with an otopod and trying to spot any of the tagged bees that returned to that site. Other highlights of that job were sheltering in a grad student's car during a sudden intense thunderstorm and having the tree we were parked under get literally exploded by a lightning strike. Police arresting a student worker for sitting in the bushes next to a public pool full of kids with a big camera and macro lens. He was photographing insects. Getting shot at in the woods by people playing paintball. Almost falling out of a tree while trying to get a wide overhead shot of a survey site. You had me at hello. They had me at sea. Pumping gas. It was fun. The people were nice. The smell of gas was intoxicating. I'm still waiting for my gasoline scented candles. Same, sometimes I just stand weirdly next to gas stations to get my fix. Landscaping for a small local business. It was my first job, after walking out of Toys R Us in the middle of a shift two weeks before Christmas, because of how wretched it was. Boss was just a regular guy, all he cared about was that you worked hard. It was hard work, but felt good being outside and active and very rewarding working your ass off for 10 hours, and then being able to step back and admire what you created, be it a fish pond, stone patio, an ice shrub garden, ECT, as opposed to unending lines of mad off customers, and cleaning up toy shelves that would be wrecked again in 15 minutes anyway, and pay was actually pretty great, $10 an hour for 50 hours a week. At 17 when your boss hands you $500 cash every Friday afternoon you're basically rich. All in all the job was no bullcrap. Boss gives you instruction, and you do it. No dumb crap about tricking old people into buying insurance they don't need, no guilt trips, if you request a day off. Number 19 year old middle management idiots with bad skin on a power trip, and if someone came in with an attitude demanding stuff, the boss would tell them to frick off. Simple as that. Oh crap, leading up to Christmas people turn into turbo douches. I can only imagine how much worse it'd be at a toy store. I'm sure you were right to walk out of that crap. I worked at a big box store with one of the 19 years old management people you mentioned. We called her little bigwig. Not to her face. Haha yeah, I actually worked party city leading up to Halloween and immediately transitioned to Toys R Us leading up to Christmas, so I was at my breaking point. The landscaping place hired me right before Christmas, when they sell Christmas trees, and it was night and day difference. People were in a good mood and spoke to me, as if I were an actual human being. Probably working for the city. I mowed all the baseball fields and city owned lots. It was pretty nice, just working alone, and listening to music. I also got to drive around in a loader, when I needed to clean up the dump spots. It wasn't glorious work, but it was almost zen-like, and I got to drive some seriously heavy machinery. Working for the city, are you David Widdison by any chance? Be a lot cooler if he was. Security at FedEx. I got in at 6am, and off at 2pm. Monday through Friday. Pace sucked. 
but it was a sub facility so all I did was drink coffee, chat with people and wand a few people as they left. Did exactly the same thing only at ups. Only difference was I had to work on Saturdays too, but the facility was closed. Such a cake job. I miss it. I worked as a moped delivery driver when I was 16 over 17 years old. At the time I had a lot of friends that spent a small fortune to be able to buy, maintain, and drive their mopeds. Despite never owning one, I could drive a moped, and I got paid to do so. My nephew's first job was working as a porter for the local BMW dealership. His job was to pick up and deliver customers cars for servicing, and he'd often have to take the cars out and get them up to operating temperatures so the technicians could diagnose them properly. He literally had a get out of jail free card to go and dog out other people's beamers. Yet another reason I do all my own work. I've waitressed in way too many restaurants and I hated all of them, except for one sushi spot. It was in a hipster part of town, so my co-workers and the customer base were cool as hell. It truly never felt like work, because I was essentially just socializing my entire shift. Enough time has passed where we all moved on or literally moved out of the city, but they felt like family and I really freaking miss it. Oddly relevant, my old manager texted me yesterday, haven't talked to him since I left in 2016, just to say he was thinking about me and wished me well. Feels Skidman. Maybe I'm just paranoid, but people reaching out after such a long time and wishing you well always makes me worry they are about to hurt themselves. Mental health advocacy is a large part of my identity so, to read this is actually really nice. I don't think you're paranoid, you're probably a compassionate person. I'm normally hyper alert for signs of emotional distress, but I've always texted someone when I'm thinking about them, and I try to express gratitude whenever I'm feeling it, often through text in the same way, so I took it as one of those, but I'll admit in the first half I thought you were going to finish, that you're paranoid for an MLM pitch and I did just remember he became a real Tom Feo, so I'm gonna stay in my ignorant bliss bubble and keep on thinking he's being genuine until he proves otherwise. Have a great day. Haunted house actor and ride operator in an amusement park. I was a ride operator at an amusement park and I hated it. People came there to have fun and they were total peens about it. I had people threaten my life over hats and sunglasses, say the most vile things about me and my family, and I even had one lady try to extort money from me because we closed the ride during a thunderstorm. The only redeeming quality was that I got to see some serious eye candy and ride a roller coaster several times a day. Damn, I'm sorry to hear you had such a terrible experience. The amusement park here isn't a huge park. Most people are. Nice. I had mostly positive experiences. Most of the terrible interactions with guests were with parents arguing with me to let their child go on the ride, even though their height did not meet the requirement. I met many great people there, and my coworkers were mostly awesome too. I got paid like $10.50 an hour, so it wasn't super low income. But I worked at a vitamin warehouse with a bunch of other dudes. We basically talked crap and laughed a lot while packing boxes together in a room all day. I think about that job a lot. I was at a crappy place in my life, and going to work wasn't all that bad for once. Till 10.50 isn't super low. My first job was $7.93 an hour. $10.50 is low, but it was enough for me to have my own apartment and finance an old hoopty in central Florida at 21. I worked in France as a saunier. I harvested salt from salt marshes on an island in the Atlantic Ocean. Worked hours under the blistering sun, with my bare feet in contact with the hot cracked earth underneath, and the salt burning my skin. I was paid very little, but I loved every moment of it. Oh the view, such a wonderful view. The peace, the lack of stress, it was wonderful 9 tenths would do it again. I can taste your poetry in my flirty cell. I can taste his salty feet in my escargot. Immediately after getting out of the army, I took a job as a security guard at a large factory as a filler, until I could find something better. I was there about 6 months. My job was to patrol the parking lots during the night shift, making sure no cars were being broken into, etc. Which is just another way of saying ride around in a golf cart smoking weed all night. The pay was crap, but I loved that job. 
Oh god, I'm currently working a job that's getting to me a bit, because I haven't had a long break in a while, I wish I could take that job for 2 months, and then return to my current one. I worked at Legoland when it first opened here in the UK. I started off on rides, but soon moved to a restaurant as the lunch breaks there were better. The restaurants back then were really decent we used to make everything from scratch. I worked in an Italian place, we used to make pasta, pizza dough, all the sauces, chop up whole legs of ham, and every single vegetable by hand. Started when I was 15, learnt all I could from the professional chefs who ran the kitchens, and by the time I left at 18 I got a job, while I was at uni in a kitchen of a family owned Italian place who couldn't believe I'd learnt all I knew from working at Legoland. Also, when I left, I hadn't realized over the near 4 years I worked there weekends and holidays I had been accruing holiday pay, and never taken a day's paid holiday. When I left they gave me a sizable check which became the basis of a savings account that eventually became a decent house deposit. What a great story. Sounds like everybody won. Scooped popcorn at a movie theater for free movie passes per week for the most entry level position, leads and managers got more. You could trade them for free food around the whole shopping center. So as an 18 year old, I got all the free movies, popcorn, and food from restaurants in the area I wanted. I worked at a movie theater when I was in high school for minimum wage, I believe it was $5.85 slash HR at the time, and I loved it. You'd sell tickets and concessions for about half an hour then just do whatever while the movie was showing. Also, free movies for me and family and all the popcorn and soda you could want while you were working. That's true. I forgot about all the downtime. Especially on weekdays. It got so boring. But cleaning that popper. Such a pain. Stocking shelves is freaking awesome. One of my favorite jobs was working at a giant liquor store stocking shelves. Customers were generally friendly and the work wasn't too bad. I learned a lot about booze and drink too. It wasn't even that awful when they cross-trained me on cashier, despite the occasional argument over IDs or whatever. What ruined it for me is when they put the type of nasty bishy woman who shouldn't even be in customer service in the head cashier position. She was constantly on my ass for no reason. And terribly incompetent too. Just all around awful cow walker worse supervisor. I told my manager I was quitting specifically because of her. It's been about 10 years, and I still see her looking miserable behind that register, so I think I won that one. There's always one. I have a cow walker that constantly tries to micromanage me because I'm newer than he is. Same position. As a student in university, one of the departments hired me to copy VHS tapes for some training course. The idea was, I got paid only like $5 a tape and each tape took like 40 minutes, but all I had to do was rewind the two tapes, swap out the one I just copied for a fresh one, put a label on, and put it in a box. Then put an empty tape in, and press play on one and record on the other. They paid me peanuts cause I was supposed to just do it in the background as I worked on my studies, or whatever. No problem. Thing was, it was end of live for VHS. Everyone had the machines but no one ever freaking used them. So everyone and their brother lent me their machines. And I just managed to split the frick out of that cord and I wanna say, rig it up to go 20 colon 1. In the end, I had a job where I just sat surrounded by machines. Did whatever I would normally do. And once an hour pressed some buttons. And pulled down something like $100 an hour for my work. I just sat on the tapes till the semester was over and then delivered them all at once. 